Heart-Centric Podcast with Rafi and Klee. Hola, you amazing artists. It's Rafi and Klee. And today we're going to talk about artist taxes, business plans, and proposals more proposals and things like that. And it's, uh, you know, it's going to be a subject that uh, is very exciting. <laughs> I can tell that by and large, it's the admin time of the year for oh, us creatives, because uh, a lot of our questions are kind of admin related yeah, today. Very admin related. And obviously, if you guys are watching or listening to this, we're here with our amazing Rogue Artist family, uh, who is going to chime in. So if you're listening and you hear us read off a comment, that is their brilliant selves um, chiming in and giving us great feedback and insight into the subject that we're talking about. So, or questions that may arise related to the topic as well. Exactly. So without further ado, let's talk about uh, taxes. I mean, basically, one of the questions that we got had to do with taxes and what kind of things um you write off how you categorize your stuff how you categorize your so stuff basically the question went like this taxes <laughs> In inventory <laughs> is an evil word so how do you classify all your stuff for your taxes right um and so when Rafi and I started doing the tax thing, we had that very same question. Yeah, actually, the very first time, I would say that the first time that we put our um, creative business together that we opened up, mm -hmm. it, uh, back then it was Rafi Was Here Studios, but um, Rafi and Klee Studios, we decided that like, okay, we got to do federal taxes. Let's tackle this sucker. Let's do it. Awesome. And uh, we basically sat for about five days, I want to say. Not awesome. From morning until night, trying to figure out exactly what things meant what. Because, you know, my family's run a business for a long time. But as far as like that side of it, I hadn't really looked at it all that much. No, and that generation is kind of like, just put whatever you want to. And we were like, well, yeah. Mm. <laughs> that's, that's not what... That's my unsolicited advice, by the way. <laughs> so after um, a not very awesome five days of trying to figure out how to categorize our stuff, we ended up hiring a, a CPA yeah. um, who gave us the basics on how to categorize your stuff, which we'll talk about first, and then we'll talk about how that's been tweaked. Yeah. I think that's a good plan. It's been tweaked. It was good to have a CPA. Now, first off, like if you're going to have somebody um, doing your taxes, you want to make sure that you have a good relationship with them and also that you are willing to really ask questions. Yes. Um, and that they're willing to answer your questions. When it came to her, I think that because she was independent – she wanted to hold on to the reins. And so like anytime that we ask questions about something, we would get the runaround. We would it. get the lingo explanation with yeah. terms that we didn't understand. It's yeah. like it makes sure your your professionals are willing to explain things to you in you in layman's terms. Right. Because Be Because honestly, you're gonna hire them and at some point either you're gonna keep them on or you're going to ask them a question, you're going to research it yourself, and then you're going to get to a point where you're like, why the hell am I paying this person when I'm not getting any support coming from <laughs> and them? And it's been years and I still don't <clears throat> understand exactly what's going on. Exactly. Right? So a lot of it, like we ended up just doing our own research. We would ask a question. We would look at the taxes. So throughout, I want to say maybe about four years of having a tax professional do our taxes, Little by little over the years, we start to really realize how it works and what it is that we could write off and uh, things like that. Now, uh, this is not tax advice. I want to make that very, very clear. This is not, we're not tax professionals. We're just artists that happen to do our own taxes. We use uh, self-employed. TurboTax. TurboTax, self-employed. Self and, um, you know, so as far as like, Tax laws are constantly being updated every year, every year, every half year, things are happening with taxes. So like that side of it gets taken care of uh, by TurboTax self-employed because they update their stuff 
every year with the new tax laws. Um, one, one example of things changing every year, for example, like mileage, mm -hmm. mileage, the mileage, uh, whatever you're able to write off per mile that changes every single year. It doesn't stay the same. Yeah. So it's important to stay updated with stuff. And the advice is if you don't know anything about taxes, definitely hire somebody to do your taxes. TurboTax is though now really good at guiding you through um, and explaining what the major categories definitely are. Definitely was not good when we first got it though. No. And I do have to wonder if that has more to do with the fact that like we know more now. Maybe. So, you know, either way, it's something you could look at. You could definitely look at TurboTax, but if if you have if you have questions about stuff, you know, it's it's good. It was good for us, even though we weren't getting answers for those four years to have somebody walking us through or at least filling out the stuff so that then we could walk through and look at we it. Could ourselves. Re we reverse engineered the paperwork yeah. after the fact. Um, yeah, I, I want to say idea. hi to Zara and Ave. Ave's here. Hi. And Valorf is here. Valorf hi, is here as well. Um. So with that in mind, yes, it is a good idea to talk to a CPA, even to hire a CPA for one year to explain things to you. There are major categories that seem to be by and large the same for the United States federal tax. So we'll go over those and then we can quickly cover how it is that we keep track of that stuff. And then yep. we can keep go over some things that you don't need to keep track of that a lot of creatives think that you do. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So... Uh, let's go over the categories. The biggest category for us and probably for a lot of creatives is your supplies. Supplies. Right? Your, um, your The materials that you use, the equipment that you buy, anything that you use to create stuff. Now, the caveat is that you need to sell a certain amount of annually. art annually in order for it to be categorized as not a hobby. I believe that threshold is currently $400, right. is it not? But that's something that you'd want to look into because thresholds also are one of the things that change. Yeah, big time. Um, but yeah, your biggest category is going to be the materials used in the creation of your artwork. We don't itemize those materials or break them down any further. They literally go into a category called supplies. Yeah. You don't need to complicate it any more than that unless you want to for your own personal records. But yeah, you know. they're, they're basically <laughs> your supplies. So supplies is definitely one materials, supplies, anything that you purchase that has to do with um, the creation of the art that you create, right? Think of it this way. When it comes to things that like are written off for the most part, the way that I think about it is if I wasn't doing this thing for a living, would I buy this? Right. You know, and in the case of like building an art studio and buying certain easels and stuff like that, that I'm using for my business, um, you know, maybe I'd buy it as a hobby, but because I sell artwork, then it's considered a business and all of that stuff is a write-off. Um, one of the things that is not a write-off, and I thought that this was a write-off in the beginning, is clothes, right? I was like, well, my clothes gets all full of paint and stuff like that, so like I could, I could write off my entire wardrobe. Nay. And, you know, you can write off like aprons that are spe or like stuff that is specifically for the task that you're working on, mm -hmm. right? For so, example, a dust filter mask yep. would be very highly dust specific. Dust filter mask, uh, gloves that you use for polishing, like Clea has polishing gloves and stuff. Mm -hmm. Stuff that you use just for that, right? So, But if you literally wear it for any other purpose, then it, it is not uh, yeah. write-offable. Yeah, so okay. let, let's continue this engaging a story of taxes. So our second major category for us is office supplies, which has everything to do with admin. So we're talking about printer paper, lights, staples, <laughs> uh, staples, tape, packing tape, y'all. Shipping, shipping supplies such as boxes, packing tape, anything that goes inside of the box to wrap your art. Um, all of that is also stuff. Postage. P our postage is a subcategory of our office expense. Um, 
any publications related to your trade that you might be subscribed to? Things that you're subscribed to that you wouldn't be subscribed to uh, if you were not doing what you do. Such as like Wire Wrap Magazine, yeah. right? Um, <laughs> or, <laughs> or stuff of that nature. Yeah. Um, so basically, that's like any of your admin stuff that is specifically for your business. If you need to buy a calculator so that you can choop, choop, choop at your desk. Yeah. If you if you have a subscription to QuickBooks so that you can run your business, that's Office Supply uh, and so on and so forth. If you need an external hard drive to store your files, that's an Office Supply. Yeah. Now, you got to make sure that all this stuff is just used for the business. Dedicated to your business. You can't use it for anything else. Yeah. And if you get audited, they will check. Yes. Um, so we've heard. <laughs> That's not happened to us. That's office supply. The next major category, I would say, would be fees, right? Fees that you pay. Fees that you pay to a platform online, such as Etsy or your own like Shopify um, web hosting fees. Fees that you pay to get into a show or a juried yep. exhibition. Um, so fees is a big one. That That can be one that... If it's little amounts, like with um, a shopping platform, it can feel like not worth tracking. But when I added that up at the end of the year, oh, the it, last year every, that we were, Every single fee is worth it tracking. It was $2,000 yeah. the last year that we were on Etsy for each of us. Every fee is worth tracking. So, and and the, the, that's the cool thing about keeping track of all of these things is that... It's very important as an artist or as any kind of business owner to understand how much money is coming in and how much money is going out. And when you're doing your federal taxes, it really forces you to take a look at that and see what your expenses are and what they're not. Rachel asked, what about online subscriptions for places like Canva? Absolutely. Yes. A subscription to Canva so you can create uh, mock-ups for your art business is absolutely uh, able to be included. Yeah. And you would include that under subscriptions, or you could technically put it under office expense too, probably. Cameron yeah. says, are learning subscriptions going to count? If it's learning related to your trade, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Cameron said, I paint in a black chef ch shirt. That's hard to say. A black chef shirt and <laughs> pants. I look well, goofy. I look goofy, but it works. I love that. Absolutely. And if that's if, And that's the thing. Like, if you have an outfit that you only use for painting, right? You put it on and you go in and paint it. For example, if Mr. Rogers uh, only put on those shoes when he was doing a certain thing, those shoes technically could be a write-off because he doesn't, he doesn't wear them anywhere else. Right. Yeah, his shoes and his sweater. So like, if you're doing the same thing with your art, you could pretty much... <laughs> Uh, write that off. I wear certain outfits so much on our live streams that technically they could be a uniform for me also. I, I feel like this gray sweater has made numerous appearances. I don't I don't think we could write this off. I would you not, wear that gray sweater to everything. I would not attempt to. Um, okay. In fact, she's been wearing that gray sweater for about 30 days. No, I have not. <laughs> Thank you very much. I put this gray sweater on this morning. I am going to plug my uh, monkey uh, monkey monkey <laughs> I'm going to plug my monkey book. Hey guys, buy a monkey book, okay? Yeah. I'm going to plug my Making Art, Making Money book because all of this information is in there in the, you know, obviously I don't give uh, tax advice, but I do talk about our financial ecosystem and all of the things that we write off, at least at the time of writing this book. So there and is a list in there. Also, you might be able to write off the purchase of that book if you're using it as a business learning resource. That is true. That is true. <laughs> Just FYI. I'm not saying for sure, but you might be able to. Okay, so um, the next major category is any money that you spend to advertise your business. And that could be online advertising, that could be in-person advertising. What are you laughing I'm at? I'm reading their comments. Uh, basically, Cameron said, it's only been seven days, Ralphie. Be nice. <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, I've never plugged in a monkey. Sounds fun. <laughs> what are those people doing plugging in those monkeys? Yeah. It's crazy. Um, anyway, advertising. <laughs> Is the book going to go audiobook also? Yes. Yes, yes it will. Absolutely. Um, I am a month behind, so I'm hoping to be releasing the audiobook for the money book in March. March. 
It was supposed to release in February, but I'm currently working on a rogue artist community site Hooray! that is going to be awesome. So, yeah. And by the way, all of that stuff as well. Because it is part of the income stream. And that's something that you need to take a look at. Like, really, really break it down. Look for sure, you know, for the information. But if this is something that you are purchasing that you would not otherwise purchase, um, and it's for your business, then most likely it falls under, in fact, I pretty much guarantee that it does fall under some kind of write-off. Mm -hmm. So that's something to think about. Now, if it's something that you use all the time or you'd use it whether with your business or without your business, um, then in that case, like that's where that's where it gets a little iffy. There are some gray areas. For example, your phone, right? You might use your phone to answer business emails and take business calls, but should you also use your phone to call your mom? <laughs> or your person or your kids, then it's not fully no. write offable. No, and depending on the year, you might be able to write off a certain percentage of usage. Mm -hmm. um, and in some cases, you have like, we have two phones. We have a business phone and, and a we personal have a bat, personal a bat phone. A bat phone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, back to advertising. It's pretty self-explanatory. Any money that you spend advertising your business, um, postcards, flyers, things that you include with your packages, such as business cards, uh, things of that nature. Uh, websites. Websites. Websites fall into advertising because you wouldn't have a website unless you were, you know, it's, it's anything that you use to put yourself out there that you're paying money for, um, all of that falls under advertising. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you pay an influencer to promote your product, I don't think any of us here do that. But if you do, that's fine. Um, and that's a right. We should to, really pay an influencer to talk about us, to talk about us and our art and be like, yeah, look at this art. They'll probably get it all mixed up. They'll be like, look at this jewelry that Rafi created and these paintings that Klee created. Cause mm. I don't know. Um, Every time I hear about paying an influencer, I'm like, yeah, but they don't know you. So what about, Cindy wants to know, what about buying your own products like a t-shirt to wear in public for advertising purposes? Yeah. 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 I absolutely. think so. Absolutely. I mean, that's one of the things though. You have to be able to justify that you would not buy this unless you were using it for said thing. And so you kind of have to sort of, like, can you prove it, right? That's, that's the question that we ask ourselves if an audit happens. Can you prove the business use for this? What I would actually write that off for is, uh, you know, for proofs, because you're able to write off your proofs, right? So quality like, control. Quality control. So if you need to order a specific amount of T-shirts in order to make sure that the quality is good, you wouldn't be buying those T-shirts unless you were checking the quality. Checking the quality. So that's something that you could definitely write off. I have a cling for my car. Absolutely, yeah. that's a write off. A cling for your car. Okay, so after that, uh, another category is meals and entertainment, which is a tricky one, and you want to be careful with this. Meals um, and entertainment change as well. That's yeah. one of the ones because. Uh, over the year or last year with the pandemic, there was a different rule that applied. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you cannot write off your entire meal and um, you cannot write off a meal just because you, you know, want to, you want to. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you are doing a four day show and you're purchasing food because you have no other option than to purchase food because you're at a four day show. That counts. Yeah. Um, Again, one of those one of those things that like if you're at a four day show and you can't go home to eat and you don't typically eat out and you need something, then that is a write off. However, the entirety of it is not. No, I believe it's a percent. It's a percentage it's of sometimes 50 percent. It's sometimes 25 percent. Yeah. If you take clients out for a meal to discuss business or an agreement that you're working on or a proposal, um, that is a write-off. Uh, and again, it's the same rules, basically. Yep. Basically, um, think of it this way. If you are writing off specifically because it is your, uh, you have to eat somewhere and it is your only option to eat at this place because you are busy working or because you're meeting someone there for your business, then that's, that's where you can write it off. Mm -hmm. 
that's where you can write it off. Okay, so the <clears throat> next category. Bethy, uh, Beth said it's like 30% for meals. That sounds right, Beth. Um, the next, what am I missing? Obviously mileage. Let's talk about mileage. Mileage. Track your mileage. Track your mileage, guys. Um, if you have to go somewhere specifically to purchase supplies, if you're driving to a gallery that you show work at, if you're driving to a show, basically anywhere that you would not be going if not for running your business other than your place that you work from, yep. right? <laughs> um, then that's a mileage write-off. Yeah, and the way that I look at it is because back when I was working and I was in management, I didn't get to write off the miles that I traveled to work because that place is established, right? So if you have an established location, for example, if you have a studio outside of your home and that's where you work, that does, you can't write off that mileage. House to studio is not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, however, if you're in the studio and you need to deliver some art, then that is a write off. Mm -hmm. Anything that is work related that isn't typical, that isn't part of your normal routine, that could be written off in mileage. Now, as much as you guys are going to not like this, as much as I don't like it, you have got to keep a mileage log because this is one of the biggest things that gets checked. This and home use square footage are two of the big red flags for taxes. You have got to keep a mileage log, whether it's on a phone or whether it's on your computer or whether you physically keep a paper book, which I do, because <laughs> I can stick it in my purse. And I mean, I like, I like having tactile stuff. I know a lot of people do things on their phone, but like I like being able to feel it, you know, um, and, and be able to dig for it and look for it and have something physical to touch. So yeah, we keep a, we keep a mileage log in the car and then we jot down our mileage whenever we go somewhere. Now there are some pretty good apps that'll track your mileage for you. I didn't like the ones that I tried a few years ago. Um, so I still keep a paper log and I just write where we're going and I worry about figuring out the mileage later. As long as I know the date and where we went, that's the information yeah. I need. Um, Mile IQ is your friend, said Bethy Mile Bethy IQ. Bear. Awesome. Awesome. Um, it's something that we'll look into. It's something that we've been thinking about updating. Zara said tactile is my thing, too. Ave said, I use QuickBooks mileage thingy in the app. You swipe left and write for biz versus personal. Oh, that's pretty good, Ave. That's really cool. I love that. So any of you that are using QuickBooks, that's a good one to probably yeah. implement for your mileage. Mileage can super duper add up. Yeah. Just like nickel and dime fees that you may not pay attention to, but that could add up to hundreds or thousands of dollars. So track your mileage. That's You want to track all of it, you guys. All of it, because every little bit helps, you know, it, it, the, our neighbor dogs are going crazy outside right now. Let me, uh, <laughs> I'm not even sure if you guys could hear them. Can you hear these dogs? They are so loud. So loud. 52 cents a mile. It was 50 cents the, the, uh, the year before that, I believe it was 49 cents and it just seems to be going up. So like you want to make sure that you keep track of these things because listen, what, the most important thing that I could tell you as far as running a business was something that was shared with us early on was make sure that you write off everything that you have the right to write off. Mm -hmm. Like there, there is no reason for you to pay federal taxes on money that you have spent legitimately for your business mm -hmm. or time that you have spent legitimately for your business as in travel and stuff like that. So I know that it seems like a pain in the ass, but put together a system that really does keep track of this because, you know, if it, the more that you scale up, you want to make sure that you're in a place that's comfortable where at the end of the year, you're not dreading uh, tax season. Mm -hmm. And I mean it, you guys. If you have to pay a dollar in parking so that you can uh, go to your gallery, <laughs> your co-op gallery or your exhibition. That is that is in parking and fees. If you yeah. have to pay a toll in order to get to a location that is you're selling your art to mm -hmm. that you don't typically go, 
that every time you go to a festival, that is that mileage and any tolls that you incur during that time, that is all stuff that you write off because you would not be paying for that unless you were doing this business. Okay, so Zara said, yes, you're supposed to do your best to write things off as much as possible. Exactly. It's true, it's our duty. Um, <laughs> one that you may or may not have is if you have to hire someone to do a freelance job for you. Contract work. Contract work. If I have to hire Rafi's dad to, to cast something for me, um, when we, when we, if we hire someone to proofread something or edit something or whatever... <laughs> um, and you pay them in monies, which you do for the most part, then that's a write-off. Yeah. Um, I mean, and that's the thing, like you want to make sure, because think of it this way, if you're working on something, you're working on a project and your plan is to sell that project, every fee that is incurred in creating that thing is something that you write off because that, that takes away from your profit. You're basically paying federal taxes on the money that you're making. It's your income tax, right? Mm -hmm. So whenever you're paying, if you're paying someone to proofread something or you're paying someone to build your frame or you're building someone to add some kind of technique to something, mm -hmm. all of that stuff is a write-off. All the materials that are involved, all of that is a write-off because that's taking away from your bottom line. And so you're not making a profit on that money that you spent. Exactly. So that, that's, it's very, very clear. You know, like you don't, you don't, you don't want to write off shit that like, that you're not using for your business. No, but I mean, in the days of free, you know, freelance work is a bit big. Now, if you hire someone on Fiverr to make a logo for you, that's part, that's part of it. Yeah. Right. If you hire someone to design a website for you, obviously, um, so just keep track of that stuff as well. Um, okay. Also, one of the things that I want to tell you, and this doesn't have to do with federal taxes, it has to do with, um, with the state taxes and stuff like that. If you, uh, so I don't want to confuse you guys. I want to put that distinction because this part doesn't have anything to do with federal taxes. If you buy stuff for your business from a supplier, um, make sure that even if they don't have it on their website available to you, make sure that you contact them and let them know that you are tax exempt, that you are using these materials to create your stuff. Um, as long as you are registered with your state as a resale business, you yep. have a resale certificate, it doesn't hurt to reach out. Yeah. And reach out. I recently had to argue with one of the suppliers that I have for a while for a while and you know at the end of the day they don't have they they have to do this this is something that's legal so like make sure you know I basically gave them the ultimatum and was like listen I am within my rights I am within my legal rights um either you do this or we'll go elsewhere we'll go elsewhere not, yeah now that being said if you are paying sales tax that is also part, part of the cost. If you're paying sales tax that you should not have to pay. Um, also, while we're on the topic, if you hire a CPA to do this stuff for you, what you pay the CPA is a write-off. Yeah. Now, make, <laughs> let's make this clear. You write off last year's CPA this year. You don't write off this year's this year CPA, CPA fees this, this year. Yes. Yeah. It's so a, that that's an expense from last year. Any any CPA fees that you paid for last year, those are written off as well. Mm -hmm. Um okay, the next the the next and maybe last major one is your home use expense. Yep. Or your studio expense, right? If you have a dedicated building that you own or rent or lease that is solely used for the purpose of your business, then that space is a write off. Yeah. 100% as long as it's used only for business. And remember, you have to, that's something that a lot of people will be like, I'm just going to write off the whole thing because I work everywhere and all that stuff. Uh, especially when you're working at home. Yeah, when you're working at home. You got to be able to prove. So let's make that distinction, yeah. right? You're leasing a space that's only as your studio. That's 100%. You're working from home. 
you have to be very specific. Yeah. If you have entire rooms solely dedicated to art and nothing else happens there, great. You could write those. You could you could add those rooms as part of your business. If you have mixed use rooms, it's a they big don't no count. <laughs> they, they don't, don't count. count, and that is the one thing. I would say that that's one of the biggest things that does raise a red flag that yeah. causes a lot of audits is when people overdo it and they're like, well, I use like 90% of my house for this. And it's funny because like we never did that. And our apartment was literally almost <laughs> all of it. You guys, we had artwork stored in the hallway. There was a room that we had that used to be where we would sit and watch TV and that eventually just filled up with artwork and supplies and boxes and things like that. We had our studio in our living room. We had the kitchen and we would use the sink in the kitchen for the stuff. We had the bathroom and our bedroom. And our bedroom had artwork stacked uh, against the walls. Our bathroom was the only place where we didn't, we didn't store artwork because that's... Yeah. That's just weird. So automatically, I don't, don't want to sell. I don't want right. to be like, well, we keep this one in this our one bathroom was... <laughs> right by the toilet. So automatically you can't write off your kitchen, your bathroom or your bedroom where you sleep. Yeah. Um, and basically what we were told was if, if you're, if you're doing more than 50% household usage, it's automatically a red flag. You can, if you, you can. in fact are. Yeah. Above fifty percent home usage. As you had, far as like an audit, you just need to be able to show them like, I don't use this room for anything other than this. Yeah. And so that's basically how that works. And those are the major categories of stuff. As <laughs> as our question was posed, here's something you don't have to do. Beth we, said, and if you pay them more than six hundred dollars, you issue have them to a ten issue them a ten ninety nine. Yes, yes, Correct. for contract. Well, that's work. backtracking to f hiring someone. Yeah. freelance to do um, work. We jumped the timeline there yeah. a little bit. Um, those things are really simple to do. Don't let uh, forms scare you. Ten ninety nines and W nines are quite simple. Yeah. Uh, okay. So one thing that we thought we had to do when we first started, uh, was <laughs> the word inventory, uh, which is the word in our question here, inventory. Yeah. One thing you don't have to do is try and categorize and write off your works of art that are inventory that you have yet to sell. This is one of those things that is really confusing for people because it, it really does come down to the type of business that you are registered as. Yeah. For the most part, uh, artist, and the, my recommendation is soil, so, soil, soil proprietor. Just go out and proprietize some soil. Indeed. Uh, sole proprietor, uh, Clean Eye are an LLC uh, partnership. Uh, but we are basically, you know, husband and wife. There's, we are a special partnership. There's a special partnership that we get to be because we're married. So um, if you are an LLC or a sole proprietor, you are not required um, under a certain amount of annual sales. I think once you're making over, like if you're making over a million. If you're making like huge bank. <laughs> then you, you have know. to do certain things. Yeah. But for most of us. You're not required to keep track of your inventory because that's essentially for that's for loss purpose, corporate that's loss purposes. Corporate loss pur purposes, yeah. Because you know, basically, you're keeping track of. It, to explain it, if I've got um, five of this product, right, and I have taken inventory of that product, and I know that it's a hundred dollars each, right. That means that I have $500 worth of inventory. Now, if I put one, give one away on sale, right, and it is $50 off, then I have to keep inventory and track of those numbers because that inventory that I keep becomes part of the money that I have, if that makes sense, right? So... If I if one gets stolen, then I have to keep track of that and be able to write that off as a loss. Money invested that wasn't recouped. Money invested that wasn't recouped. There 
unless you are keeping vast amounts of, of inventory because you have a million dollar corporation, there is absolutely no reason for you to be keeping inventory and reporting inventory at the end of the year. Because really as a sole proprietor, it is money in, money out. Money yeah. in, money out. The only reason you would want to do this as a sole proprietor, yeah. and trust me, in my opinion, it's not worth it. If you want to say, I've got pieces that I invested money in that I haven't sold yet, that I have yet to recoup that money, and you want to claim that against your income as a loss, then you have to do inventory. But it's not worth it to us because you are going to sell that thing at some point. Yeah. So at some point you're going to recoup that money. So uh, there's there's tons of other expenses unless you're like S Corp or big. If you're big corp, then you got to do that stuff. Yeah. If you're um, S Corp, big corp, C Corp, C Corp, don't, don't. So proprietor, just, just, just <laughs> my recommendation is just so pro keep it small, keep it small. My, my cousin, um, He's got a business and he didn't know anything about starting it and decided to go in. So he was like, well, this sounds right. You know, like he did S Corp. He did S Corp. I think. And like at the end of it, when you're looking at the amount of fees that you have to pay and extra paperwork, uh, and different extra filing paperwork, times, different filing times, like all this extra stuff and payroll, it's like, listen, just keep it simple. Mm -hmm. Keep it as simple as you possibly can. So that everything is just easy for you to do because, um, yeah, inventory. Inventory yeah. is one of those things that, like, it should be a personal thing. Like, you want to know what you have, you know, if you're going to keep inventory, but not something that you are reporting at the end of the year because uh, your individual inventory doesn't count as part of your profit and loss, you know. Uh, so that's just my suggestion but obviously you take that with a grain of salt and decide, you know, which direction it right. is that you want to head in with in, your business. In my mind, when I purchased the materials to make said thing, I wrote off those materials. Yep. So I don't need to, again, write off the thing that I made. Yeah. Because, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um. So so there's that. And I think that's our major tax categories. Uh, did I did we miss any? I don't know. And if, if we did, you know, it's in my it's book. It's all in here. <laughs> as well as how we keep our ledgers. Shameless and promotion. Basically everything we do to run this business um, on yeah. the money side. Yeah, everything, everything. And we, you know, I, I think uh, it's really great for people that, that use QuickBooks and stuff like that. We actually, uh, Cleed likes to joke around and she calls it notebooks. I use notebooks. Like we have everything jotted down. We are very old school when it, when it comes to everything and... Uh, how we keep our paperwork and then how we file our taxes at the end of the year. One final thing on this taxes thing. You've probably heard us say this before, but I can't stress enough how important this is. How do you keep track of all this stuff, right? All the stuff you bought. Uh, you can keep a spreadsheet if you want to. A lot of people do and it works for them. Please, for the love of everything, have a dedicated business bank account. Yes. And don't use it for non-business related activity. Yes. Because basically what we do at tax time is I take all of our bank statements from the year from this one account that only is for business and I know exactly what everything is. Yeah. Now I could plug those items into a spreadsheet throughout the year and make my life easier at tax time and that's something that I may do going forward in the future but this one is how I do it. One right of the now. things, one of the other things as well with that is that let's say that you do get audited, right? If the IRS comes out and they see that you're making money in this account and you've got this account and whatever like that, um, there might be a, a thing where they're like, well, that's from a different account. That's not part of your business income or that's not, that expense isn't part of your business expense because isn't this the account, right? They don't like seeing a bunch of accounts everywhere. No. So it's really important to have one account where your money comes in from your business 
And everything that you buy for the business comes out of that one account. And any money that you need to withdraw for personal use, because you got to pay your bills and have food and what have you, is a personal draw. It's like paying yourself, but that's what it's called. And it you can't write that off. <laughs> Cindy said, do you pay in taxes in court? No. Estimated tax? We don't. We don't. It's something that we're planning on doing. And you're also asking, how do you figure that out? Basically, what you would do is take a look at last year's numbers, total that out, mm -hmm. and um, break that down. You know, let's say that you think that maybe you're going to make some more money this year or you're going to make less money. It's all an estimation. So whatever it is that you're paying in taxes, um, break that into quarter, quarters, and then just send that payment. Basically what that is, is like, you know, at the end of the year for people that are working a job, they're paying essentially an estimated amount with their paycheck. Which is why right? you get a return. And at the end of the year, you know, you file your taxes and whatever you overpaid, you get back. That's your return. Or you so, owe money somehow. Yeah, or you owe money somehow. But so this is our way. If we start paying it quarterly, first off, we don't get the fine that we get. It's not a very high fine, but... But it's a fine. It's a fine. And second off, um, at the end of the year, when you finish all your paperwork and stuff, you might actually get a return. So yeah, it's, it's a good idea. It's something that every year, including this one, we're like, we this say next we're gonna year we're going to do it. And then next thing you know, like two months have gone by and we're like, ah, so we might do it this year, actually. We, we should might. do it this year. Yeah. Um, just for the sheer purpose also that it doesn't hurt as much to send the money in smaller increments. Yeah. Instead of like one big lump sum at the end of the year. Uh, Diane asked, did you guys find that in the beginning you used multiple accounts to pay for business expenses due to lack of sales no 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 this is something we knew we right immediately away immediately just open up one account we didn't have uh as you say we didn't have very much money to pay for anything at all so the fact of the matter was we scrounged a lot yeah um we were very thrifty when it came to the business but we we were told straight away and we feel very fortunate for that that this is something that needs to happen yeah. like the minute you have any kind of sole proprietor status or you make that threshold of four hundred dollars or any of that business you got to have this so yeah. we did yeah um, yeah we started that from the beginning so you might decide like that you want to assign one credit card that is your business credit card mm -hmm. and then things will come out of that but you want to keep it very simple a for yourself but B, in case somebody does come out and audit you, you want to be able to show them stuff without having to like pull a bunch of shit out of everything. But I will give you an example, Diane, of something that did occur early on that I've since st stopped doing and a better way to do it. Sometimes I had money in PayPal from sales um, that sat in PayPal that I would not withdraw. And then we had our business account. And sometimes for security purposes or because I had the money in PayPal early on, I would pay for materials out of the PayPal account, which is a huge no-no. So, yes, actually, this is an example of exactly what you're asking. Yeah. The better thing to do is to transfer the money from the PayPal account to your business account so that you may spend it yeah. on the business On purchase. your business stuff, yeah. Or hook up your business account to the PayPal or the Venmo or whatever and make sure that that transaction comes from the business account, even if it goes through PayPal for security purposes, yep. if that makes sense. Sometimes I still use PayPal for a, like overseas purchases for security. I just have PayPal debit the amount from our business account rather than pull PayPal funds. So there's like a double layer of security there, and it still shows as a business transaction, if that makes sense. However, I think it makes sense. You need to have all of your income streams connected to that account and anything that you need to withdraw into connected to that account. Think of the account as like the business accounts, like the central hub. <laughs> and then everything, all of your personal account is an offshoot of that. I actually, and in the book, I have a, a chart. map, a chart or a yeah. map that shows our business account, what gets paid out, where things come in from, 
all the different um, streams of income that we mm -hmm. have and how they go into the account and now our how that CPA works. was able to deal with my PayPal transgressions. <laughs> <laughs> and basically what it was is then, then we had to do all the accounting for that account as well, um, yeah. which is extra paperwork and extra time. Yeah. So, but, I mean, you just want to make it easy on yourself and just have one account. If you've already started out and you've got it all kind of coming out of everywhere, that's, that's fine. That's okay. Make just, it the goal to consolidate. Yeah. Make it the goal to consolidate because that's, that's going to make your life so much easier. And really at the end of the day, um, doing the art stuff, like... You're running a business. You want to know, you want to know how much money you're making and how much is going out. You know, like it's important to keep track of money. And a lot of us have really, I don't want to say a lot of us, but there are a lot of people out there that have really poor money habits. And so when it comes time for tax time, like it's, you know, it, you, they, they dread it because yeah. it's like, I don't even know what's, what to do here. If you are keeping track of your money and making it really easy for yourself, where you're literally just looking at one account in order to be able to keep track of what's coming in and what's coming out, your life is going to be much more simplified. And really, as artists, like you want to make things as simple as possible so you are spending more time working on your art and less time trying to figure crap out. So most yeah, definitely definitely have a system in place, do it for yourself and have a checkbook for your business account. I know it's old school, but have a checkbook. There's places and things that you're going to need to write check checks for. And when you have to order checks, that's a business expense. I do wonder if there's people out there that have like never written a check. Yeah, surely there are. You think so? Surely there are. Um, and, and it's very rare nowadays that I have to write a check for something, but it does happen does i can write my checks you're such an old lady too though it works when you write a check <laughs> um did we miss any major categories here? i don't i don't think so i don't think so and honestly i should have pulled that up in the book before uh the live stream because sure there are other areas that get into more like specialized based on your situation kind of stuff but these are the this is the framework right this is the stuff that any creative entrepreneur is going to want to look at. Ah, here um, we go. Are you flipping to it just yeah. to make sure? If you guys know of a major one that we uh, glossed over, feel free to throw it here in the chat. Or if you have any other questions related to taxes, which has dominated this whole podcast. It really has. We thought we were going to cover other topics. <clears throat> no, we did not. <laughs> yeah. So taxes definitely dominated the podcast. I am going to apologize ahead of time for the, for anybody that's listening to this, that is just like, guys, this is a total snooze fest. Um, it's something everyone <clears throat> has to deal with though. I know that it's a, you know, and it is very important to some people, to some people to to anybody that's running a business and doing this. So I'm going to just go down this list really quickly with you guys as a recap so that uh, we can recap. All right, so you could be keeping close track of travel expenses, mileage tolls, parking costs, office rental, whether at home or not, if you're renting an office, commissions or payments to, con to contract workers, mm -hmm. uh, equipment used in your studio for business, uh, auto insurance and repairs for a business vehicle only, uh, non-business is calculated through the business use uh, mileage. So if you do have uh, equipment or some kind of vehicle that is only for, so like, for example, if you have a moped that you use for delivering art only, then, you know, you'd be able to uh, do one it. One can dream. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, all art supplies and materials. Special clothing or safety equipment for your work, like aprons, goggles, masks, gloves, legal and accounting fees or services, bank fees in your business account, mm -hmm. uh, studio rent or expenses, right? So like utilities, like let's say that you pay for a studio, then utilities. If not, then all that is equated in your home use thing. Mm -hmm. Utilities, including phone and internet that's used for business only. Any website, selling platform, or distribution fees. Entertainment and meals related to your business. You get a partial write-off. 
any business licensing fees that you have. So when you register your business, um, publications, periodicals, and other research materials, fees for workshops, classes, and seminars, memberships and association fees. So if you're a member of an artist guild or something like that, all of that is a write-off. Yeah, or if you need a annual certification for your trade, mm -hmm. that's a write-off. Galleries and show fees, shipping and mailing of art or purchased items, uh, repairs or maintenance for the studio. So if you do have to hire somebody to come in and fix something that is specific to your art studio, that that is also a write-off. All paid advertising or advertising materials and any and all printed material and office supplies for the studio. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's Diane what I got. Said, this is important insight for creative business, guys, so thank you. Cindy said, thank you, I really needed this. Taxes have always scared me into questioning if I want to start a business. Totally understandable. Um, it's super not so bad once you understand the basics of it, but that's why I like to talk about these things. Um, from time to time, the brass tacks, as our friend Alan would say, because it is important. And, and then there's little things that can slip through the cracks, you guys, like postage. Oh, my God. You might think postage is not that postage important. Postage adds up. We, Thousands of dollars sometimes. I, I want to say that for, for this year, when I was looking at the calculations, we spent over $2,000 in postage alone. No, it was more because we saved over $2,000 yes. by using pirate ships. Yeah. So by the way, <laughs> if you do uh, sell stuff right online, um, I'm going to recommend pirateship.com because that's where you get commercial pricing. This They are somebody that we started using right after we left Etsy uh, because, you know, one of the benefits to Etsy is that like you get to pay for commercial pricing and all that stuff. So we get to do that. We also get uh, special pricing when we do overseas and different things like all kinds of really cool stuff. And it's a free service. It is something that I have recommended for mm -hmm. years. And it always astonishes me whenever I run into an artist that I recommended this to and they don't use Pirate Ship. And I'm like, what are you doing? It's amazing. I hope Pirate Ship continues to have success. We are not sponsored by them. No, we, just we are not sponsored. We truly love what they do. Yeah. Um, and because they uh, are such an awesome free service, we just want to help spread the word for them. Not only that, but anytime you have a question, you just go under a little chat thing and immediately they're like, Yarg! You know, customer yard service. captain, what can I do? And they are the nicest people, the yeah. nicest people. I have never had an issue with them. And it's a free service, which always surprises me because like it's free and they are on top of it. Just on top. It's amazing. Of it. it integrates with your e-commerce shop. It's so nice. So thank you, Pirate Ship. Thank you, Pirate so check Ship. Check them out. Check yeah. them out. And again, this is not a sponsored message. No, so. we just like them. Yeah. Zara wants to know how is internet fees calculated since it's probably used for both personal and business. Internet for us is lumped in with our home, uh, our house yeah. bills, our utility bills. So when you do that home expense percentage, uh, then inter the same percentage gets applied to internet usage. Does yeah. that make sense? I mean, Zara, like if you were doing it, it all comes out of the same thing if you had a studio and that's you had it had its own internet mm -hmm. then you know yeah, then you that had, would be different then you would write off that whole bill yeah if you have dedicated internet specifically for your business it's the whole thing but if you have mixed use internet then it's subject to that same home use percentage yeah. as your electric would be essentially. Rachel um, said, do you have an affiliate link? You should. I know, right? <laughs> I don't know if they do affiliate links. I don't know. I'll, but... I'll have to, I'll have to, I'll ask them. It, it would be nice. <laughs> I mean, they don't charge us any money. So I'm like, I don't want to. It's the least know. we can do yeah. is to talk about how awesome they are. Yeah. Um, no, you know what? Um, they don't do an affiliate link because they don't charge any money for their service. So, yeah. yeah they're not making um, money off of the people that are signed up. They're making money off of the posted postal carriers. Yeah. So that's um, and that's why you get so many good deals and not only with pirate ship are you able to ship at a discount at a commercial rate with USPS but also UPS, mm -hmm. which has been amazing because there are some 
great prices that I've been able to charge and price and pay for in shipping my stuff. And my dudes, if you're shipping stuff overseas, the global export rates that they can get you are sometimes half of what you would normally pay. Yeah. Sometimes. Other times, it just depends. But so, really so yeah, good. I mean, I can't talk about them enough. So let's let's just end it there. <laughs> PirateShip.com. Not Do sponsored. Do it. Just Do love it. them. Okay. So so that's taxes. And I, I, I want to say that we... There's a lot that could be talked about when it comes to taxes, mm -hmm. right? And just to be clear, this is federal taxes, right? Because whenever we do any kind of video or any kind of material in talking about taxes, people tend to confuse federal taxes and then state taxes, mm -hmm. right? Two totally different things. This conversation has to do with the U.S. federal tax. U.S. federal <laughs> Income tax. It has, this is the money that you make that you have to yes. pay the federal government for. Yeah. It has nothing to do with sales tax, and it has nothing to do with state tax, as Rafi said. Ave said pirate ship is really the GOAT. The greatest of all time yeah. for shipping. Yeah. Right, Ave? It's, yeah. That's... Okay, let's let's not get started on that, because I <laughs> apparently I could just talk about them for forever. Love, uh, yeah, them and Candy. Big love. Big love. Yeah, and Canvi. Canvi.com for your mock-ups of your paintings and stuff like that. Dude, if you have not checked them out, they, I do have an affiliate link. They are amazing. And yes. they're just amazing. And it's, they're, they're actually somebody that I want to work closely with. We have some big projects in mind for the future. Mm -hmm. But again, that's one of those services that, you know, Canvi does charge every year. You could sign up for free with my affiliate link for like three months and check them out. But they're one of those services that you would write off. Yep. You know, it's part of the write-off. So any of those subscription services that you use for your business, that's all, that's all stuff that you're able to write off. Mm -hmm. So it's something, something to really, really think about. So hopefully this gave you guys some good insight and information into uh, taxes, just uh, federal income taxes. And uh, we had some other stuff that we wanted to get to, and but we'll cover those in the next podcast. Yeah, definitely. Um, which is very interesting because this time of year, there's a lot of a lot of questions are revolving around stuff like this. That like, makes sense to me. You know, putting together an action plan, putting together um, proposals, putting putting together a business plan for yourself. You know, it's the beginning of the year, and you know, us included, we're we're really really switching things up and changing things up so that when we head into 2023, um, we have a, a different plan put together. So, mm -hmm. and I think that, you know, taxes, as much as people may not want to hear or talk about taxes, at the end of the day, it's really a great way to really know what's going on with your business financially. Yeah. It is a great way to understand your your business, your financial ecosystem. Yeah. And you want to. Zara said, Canva has mock-ups. Yeah, but Canvi is my go-to. <laughs> Canvi Can is my go-to. Canva's cool. They, their mock-ups are cool, but Canvi, I mean, honestly, I haven't seen anything as good as Canvi. Cameron said, nothing like listening to taxes talk at work. Lol, still amazing. I learned a lot. <laughs> Thanks, Cameron. Sorry, Cameron. <laughs> Um, you guys, I'm a weirdo. I love talking about administrative things. She really does. <laughs> and I enjoyed um, co-authoring and editing these uh, parts of the money book also. Yeah. And obviously, you guys know that my <laughs> books are very much like you're sitting down having a conversation. So there were parts like this where I was like, how am I going to make this entertaining you for can... somebody to read? Because this is like, this is not. I think is... I think we did it. I think we did. You too. can really feel the clee in certain parts of the money book. You can. Um, but... If you if you've read my money book, uh, let me know. Contact me and let me know <laughs> if you can feel the clee in the money book because it definitely happens. All right. Um, I want to thank you guys so much for being yeah. here. The Rogues, you guys are amazing. I know that we've been quiet for a little while, so this was fantastic being able to hang out with you. And for anybody at home listening to this, thank you guys so much for listening to this. We are back now. I know that we took a hiatus for a little while because we are getting, 
you know, getting ourselves situated for the new year. But we are back, so expect a podcast every week um, with us, hopefully not just talking about taxes and stuff like that, talking about art stuff. Definitely. Um, and yeah, so for anybody that's listening at home, thank you so much. And if you like this, and this is the first time that you're listening, go ahead and click wherever it is that you need to click to to subscribe so you can listen to more. And other than that, I would say that it's about time to say goodbye. Say goodbye, Cleek. Good day. Adios. Thank you.